I haven't told a lot of people about this until now, but I have a, a, a terrible sense of direction. Let me rephrase that. I, maybe not a terrible sense of direction, maybe a terrible sense of attention to direction. It is very common for, for when Mrs. W and I were going somewhere that I'll, I'll get to talking to her about something and I go past the exit. I'll go past the exit sometimes that, that I know to my very own house uh, with my mind distracted. It seems like I'm always thinking about, uh, thinking about something or there's something a lot on my mind about solving some problems or something to do with, with uh, in the shop. Uh, and I can't really be bothered with the, the trivial um, components of navigation. <laughs> <laughs> it's terrible, and it's really bad, and coupled with a bad sense of direction, um, I have uh, the strangest difficulty understanding maps. For me, for some reason, when I look at a map, I don't, I've never had dyslexia before, and I can't say that I really understand it, but it must be something similar to that. Yesterday, uh, Jack and I were up at the mountain skiing, and we were trying to find this trail that we hadn't been on before, and we're, I'm looking at this map, and it's very clear, it's a very simple map, and I just, I can't comprehend it. Like, I, I can't do the, the flipping. Like, when I look at a map, I have to, like, turn myself in that direction, you know? I don't know if there's anyone else like that. And he's, you know, he's looking at me like, come on, Pop, it's really simple, you know? It's like, well, I'll follow, <laughs> I'll follow you. So having a bad sense of direction is also um, exceedingly inconvenient with wildland firefighting where maps uh, and directions and locations are so important. So what I've had to do uh, is uh, to, to give myself a crutch uh, in the, or an advantage uh, that will help me, assist me. Uh, I mean, a picture, you know, the guy with the going off the crutch. <laughs> will assist me uh, not to look like a fool uh, and at least have, have a basic understanding where I'm going, especially in important things like navigating in the wilderness or wildland firefighting, for example. Uh, and th what that has been is, uh, is a, a GPS. A GPS, uh, I have taken the time, uh, I've used these for years and I always have one on me uh, because it, it's helpful to me, it's, it's an aid to me um, by dropping waypoints uh, and also with the track. So if you haven't used GPSs, what's cool about them is, is I, care, I keep one right here on my wildland gear, you know, right there uh, where I can access it. I have it on all the time and it's drying track. So it's leaving little marker, a little marking line behind me everywhere I've been. Uh, so I, I can look at this and it, it, anyway, it's been a huge help to me. Also having the ability to drop waypoints, meaning um, when I'm, when I, uh, am, I'm an en engine boss and, I, and I'm, when I'm with my crew, I give them my GPS and I make them um, pin important locations, drop points, um, hella, hella spots, um, places where caches are, places where we've had you know, li just little references so I can access those. So I come back around and I'm not thinking, Oh, let's see, did I turn left or right here? You know, and so it helps me um, immensely, immensely, and it's been um, it's been invaluable to me. So uh, I'm going long here. So what I'm going to show you today is uh, my favorite way to mount these, and this will apply to anything. Uh, it, it, we're going to mount it on the Husqvarna 300 here, but I also have mounts similar that will work in your car or your boat or whatever. So if you're like me and you like to know where you're at, and not only that, is, 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 as, as men, we really like to know where we're at, I think. Uh, uh, but also, I love gauges. I love gauges and instruments. I like to know what's going on with my machine. I like sight glasses. In, uh, in fuel tanks, you know, you can say, okay, I got half, you know, I got half a, half a deal there. I like uh, oil pressure gauges and, and all that stuff on vehicles. I, I just enjoy it. I like to know the status of what's going on. I think I'm not alone with that. I think all, most men enjoy that. And the GPS is part of that too. Yes, I can put it in my backpack, in my pocket. And if I do find myself in a crossroad where I'm, I'm confused or don't know where I'm at, I can pull it out and look at it. But I enjoy having it in front of me and the screen and fiddling with everything and the elevations and all that. It's it's just fun. It gives me pleasure and enjoyment, and I, I like to have it mounted right in front of me uh, when I'm working. So let's, uh, let me show you the mount, and then we'll put it on and put an end to this miserable video. So in my opinion, and uh, my years of ex experience using these, I think that these little ram mounts are, are just fabulous. They're so inexpensive. They're so durable. They're so versatile. I have many of them, and they, they apply across different vehicles and applications. So if you're not familiar with them, the ram mount, the, the the linchpin of the whole thing is this ball, right? This ball, and then this is the corresponding socket. These are the, they call arms or whatever. This is the, a short one. They make them all different lengths. 
They make them out of plastic, some of them out of metal. I, I went with the plastic one because it's so small, I just didn't need the extra weight of the, of the steel or the aluminum, whatever it is. And there's lots of different mounts. And so, so they'll make um, this portion here, the mount, to hold pretty much anything you want from iPhones to GPSs to radios, you know, all your popular consumer electronics. You know, this one's, the wheel fell off there. Just when I was telling you how good it was, there's a little roller wheel. I noticed that this was a little bit jiggly. I'm gonna see if they can send me another one. Anyway, it still works. Uh, so this is the cradle portion of it here, and then that mounts to these universal balls. So you can take, so if you wanna mount this somewhere, for example, more permanently, you can drill holes and you can, uh, you have that ball. Once you have that ball, you could hook anything onto it at any, any time, right? So you just loosen these guys up here and they are so tough, they really will withstand almost anything. So what you have is you can put that in there like that, right? And, and then you put this ball on the other side. You probably, I don't mean to be insulting to those of you guys who have already seen these before, but with a twist of, a, of the knob there, it locks it down uh, rock solid. And what's really nice about that is that you can move it and orient it in any direction you want. Um, and change the angle. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a wonderful, wonderfully simple mount, but so very effective. So the components that we're gonna use today uh, are going to be this, these U-bolts you see here. These are the, for mounting it on a, on a bar or a tube. Uh, we're gonna be mounting it on a handlebar. So what it came with is it's got the, a large one and a small one. It's got the two nylock bolts or nuts on there. It's got this portion here, which will help it to grab and to bite around the radius of the handbar. It's got handlebar, it's got the, the, these protectors so you don't get skewered on the threaded portion and then that will hook to the deal. So the question is where to mount it? Well, if you're right-handed, because you're accessing it with your right hand, you know, I prefer to have it on the right-hand side of the handlebar. However, we've got a, a throttle cable in the way that's gonna interfere and we don't, we don't want that. So that leaves us, that makes our decision simple. So it doesn't, it's not that big of a deal, it doesn't make that much difference. So, We'll put this guy on here. It's such a great, such a great mounting system. And that will go around there. We can take it down to the flat side of the bar. Now, I don't want to interfere with my uh, click adjustments for my shock rebound. Uh, I want, that, want those to be free. So judging from past experience, I would say something like this here, right? Now, since they, they have given us nylon, nylox, these are aviation style nuts. They've got that little plastic Liner on the inside, they're really good. They don't come loose, not, not easily anyway. So there's not really any need to, um, to use a, alt or a thread locker on this. Now, if you've ridden a two-stroke bike, like from back in the day, uh, you will know that they had, well, they had a pretty bad reputation for a lot of vibration, tons and tons of vibration. And that was true even up to I'd say the 2016 models from what I understand. And what I've been surprised about on this one, this is a 2018, um, is that it has, um, it, that vibration is gone. And apparently they have done something with the engine, um, a counterbalance or something that has reduced that tremendously. No longer do you feel like your hands are falling, falling asleep uh, when, you're, when you've spent several hours on one of these. And the point being is that if you, if you are putting one of these on one of the older two strokes, even with the Nylox on there, you might want to consider uh, some thread locker just because the vibration is so extreme on that. So here's the cool part. Okay, so we can put our clamp on there now. Now I prefer the shorty. This is the super, super, this is the shortest one they make. The short clamp on there, uh, it is more than enough uh, you, you don't want the long ones. When, they, when you get them too long, you end up having to, to do something with them, and that's you know, like folding them down, and it, and it moves your thing to the wrong place. Now, there is a downside to having a GPS mounted like this on an off-road bike, and that is, is you're going to run into some, a sand wash or something, and you're going to go forward on the bike, and you're going to hit it. <laughs> and it's going to, so, so trust me on there. So, so what, when you're doing that, you know, think about when you're orient, orienting it, um, think about uh, not tight tightening it too much. And this is the reason why. Okay, so in the riding position here, uh, the, the wonderful thing about the, the mount is, uh, I'll spin this around, have this on your left side, so you can grab the, 
the GPS or whatever you use. You could do your, use your phone on this on nice days too. And then I can tighten this with the left hand uh, in a way that works for me. Now I'll typically orient it with the, this mount kind of leaning forward and with the cutouts going to the front and back of the bike. That way, when the GPS is hit, and it's not if, but when it's hit by your chest protector, it rolls it forward like this and has a tendency to, to not break. If you do it this way, uh, like here, and it, see where you're limited, you don't have the cutouts here for it to roll forward, it will snap this off, it will break. Um, how do I know? Well, I've done it. Uh, so I've learned from experience uh, to orient it this way. And don't tighten it too much. If you could, the, the lightest bit of tightening, you can tighten it so that it, it doesn't vibrate out or move on you. But when you do run forward like this and hit it, it will, it will go forward typically rather than breaking off. So just a little, a little tip there. But isn't that nice? That's a really a nice way to mount it. And you can, you, you can play with it a little bit, but it'll go any angle that you like. And you can adjust it for if the sunlight you know, get you in your way or anything, but this is really awesome. And now I can, I can go along and I can um, enter waypoints um, with my left hand or my, or my right hand. I can even do it when I'm riding. I can see it, I can adjust the backlight. It uh, doesn't get in the way, it, it flops out of the way if, it, uh, if I do have a, a, an accident. And when I wanna go in, it, and so, like if I wanted to go into a, you know, have a cup of coffee or something or go in to eat lunch with your buddies, you know, you can simply, you can take it out, throw it in your pocket and take it with you or put new batteries in it and not have to worry about it getting, getting stolen. But that, uh, that's pretty cool, huh? Here's a little wider shot. Give you, gives you a little perspective of how, uh, how it works. It's, it's really great. I might even get um, an attachment for, for a phone, the GPS on the phone. I, I, I plan on a dual sport or um, yeah, dual sport or what's the word for it? Yeah, it's dual sport, dual sporting this bike because we can plate, license plate bike, uh, two strokes uh, where I live. Um, I just have to take it down to the local saw shop and they'll do an inspection. So I gotta put blinkers, a couple things on, but I think I'll do that so I can throw a plate on it because it is fun to have a bike that you can ride a dual sport off-road, on-road, on off-road, but the, the iPhone is nice uh, or your Android, whatever you have, is really nice for that because uh, the GPS is so good on that. If you're looking for a really good app, there's an app that we use that's free on, uh, for wildland firefighting that is a free navigation app uh, that doesn't rely upon cell signals. It's called um, Avenza, A-V-E-N-Z-A, PDF Maps, I believe, Avenza PDF Maps. It's pretty much a standard with the Forest Service now in DNR. Uh, and what it does is it uses your phone um, through its GPS uh, separate of the cell tower. So you can navigate. So what you do is you go online and you download these free topographical USGS maps. So if, you're, if you know you're going to go, okay, I'm going to go to uh, this particular area and I know my route and I know where I'm going to go. I'm going to go, we're going to ride around this mountain. You pull in all those free maps and you download them on your phone. And then you have them there. And then the GPS tracker on your phone shows you exactly where you're at according to those maps. It's really a brilliant, a brilliant piece of software uh, application for, I believe it's Android and Apple, but um, Avenza PDF Maps is perfect. So if, if I was um, gonna go on lots of trips like that, I might even think of mounting a second one on the right, have my phone on one and this on another, and it's kind of fun to play with both and see how they line up. And, and th that whole navigating side of it uh, to me is, uh, is enjoyable on motorcycles. So. Uh, don't forget to put your thread caps on there, the little protectors on there, in case it'll you know, keep you from getting getting chewed up. But uh, yeah, it's it's great if you're if you're if you're up on the pegs, you can easily adjust it, and you can see, you know, you can change it. It's a it's a wonderful mounting system for just about anything. Um, so that's about it. You can tell I'm a fanboy of the ram mount. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next video. Good morning, everyone. It is a cold and rainy day on the homestead. The freezing level is at 6,500 feet, meaning everything below that is raining. It is miserable. All that beautiful snow that we got is uh, melting, melting away. We oftentimes have a, a pretty big snow event, usually around February sometime. It seems like there's two big ones. There's one right before Christmas. There's one after. So that remains to be seen. So that drives me inside. So we have, uh, we've got uh, Sundays for us are kind of a, um, a workaround inside the house, finishing up little projects and things. Mrs. W needs a, 
a little uh, uh, clever little shelf in the downstairs bathroom, so I might make that. I've got a little piece of CVG fur that uh, will be nice for that. And uh, she wants me to build her some bookcases and just all those little things that need done. It's always um, kind of a nice day where we work together as a family. So I'll, I might bring you along for that. I also, I, I really want to, it makes just to share with you the uh, the new knife sharpener. I, I spent... Um, Oh, what was it? Uh, late last night, I spent a couple hours sharpening up Mrs. W's all of her kitchen knives, which were in pretty, pr a pretty poor state, as I think most of you guys can relate. Um, man, oh man, they are sharp now. I have, have to give a war warning to the family. They've been used to cutting w with uh, not super sharp knives for so long that uh, they're sharp now. I'll tell you that. Hair, hair popping sharp. So, uh, so that's coming up. I'll share that with you. All right. Well, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next video.